Hi, welcome to anglos.co.il. I'm Warren Lewis, and today we're going to be talking about car insurance in Israel. Our guest today is Danny Newman from Goldfish Insurance. Danny, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Thank you. A short background and your experience in, in the insurance industry here in Israel. Okay, so uh, originally from, from the UK, London, made Dalio in 1999, used to work back in the old country for Sun Life of Canada. And since 2006, I've been uh, working for Goldfuss Insurance. I uh, set up the Modian office in 2006, and in 2012, I opened up the Bet Shemesh office. Okay, great. So you've got a lot of experience. Hopefully you can help us out with the, with the nuts and bolts of car insurance. Um, just to start off with, I know there's different kinds of insurance. When, when, I, when I do my car insurance, there's like multiple documents I have to fill in. So can you just explain to us what is the difference between your Betuach Chova, Betuach Makif, and your Betuach Tad Gimel? So what I do, I, I bought some, uh, <laughs> so for, I, think, I often say the easiest way is to actually highlight okay. what covers what. So, so let's say I'm driving along in my, uh, my, my Mini and I crash into the yellow uh, Volkswagen Beetle. There's damage to my car, damage to uh, the, the Volkswagen, and for good measure, I've also, in the accent, knocked over a pedestrian as well. Oh my goodness. So we'll, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll cover everything. You really got to want, you want to get day. into the car with me after this. But, uh, no, it's, uh, this this will, will help understand what's covered what, because a lot of Great. people have a misconception as to what is covered by, by which aspects of the insurance, especially as this is one of the insurances that is actually different to how car insurance is built in, in, in other countries, and what's the legal minimum? First and foremost, what is the legal requirement? There is no legal requirement whatsoever for me to have coverage to cover the damage to my car or to the other person's car. Okay. The only legal minimum requirement called bitur chova, from the word liot chayav, is to have to have an obligation, hence compulsory insurance, the obligatory insurance, right. only covers bodily injury. So we're only looking at this individual who has been injured, whether he be a pedestrian, whether he or she be a passenger in that car right. or in my car. Yeah. First and foremost, it is a no-fault insurance. It makes no difference whatsoever that I was at fault. Any person who's in this car that I've hit will be covered by the bitur chova okay. of this car. Yes. It is not an insurance that will cover, let's say I own two, three, four different cars. Each car will have its own individual bituach chova, gotcha. compulsory insurance. So even though I'm at fault, my chova will only, my compulsory insurance will only cover the injured people in my car and the pedestrian that I've hit. It will not cover the person here. Okay. So it is a no fault insurance. It's all based on the 1975 Insurance Act called Choka Paltad. Um, which covers people who are injured in traffic accidents. There are no sums insured listed in the policy whatsoever. Yes. There is no deductible, excess, hishtatfutatsmit, no copay. Yes. Whatever is decided either as an out of court settlement or, or if it goes to court, what is determined by the court? It needs to be paid out to the individuals who have been injured. Okay. That is what the insurance company pays out. So that's the first aspect. The other aspect to, to note is that the cost of the Butuah Chova is based on a number of factors. Because we're dealing with bodily injury, so not only is it based on the type of car, the, the, the engine capacity, the more powerful cars may cost more, uh, or the age of the driver or the claims experience. Yes. It's also based on the safety measures in the car as well. Okay. So an older car that doesn't necessarily have airbags or lane deviation systems may be more to insure than a newer car that has all these safety okay. features as well because it is essence covering personal injury. Okay. Um, the older the driver usually, the cheaper it is as well. Yeah. And it goes by the age of the youngest driver. Okay. That's Pitor Chova, so we've dealt with the okay. passenger. So by definition, as you say, Pitor Chova is the only one that you, that you have to take out. When, when I buy a car and I drive out of that 
the car sales place, that's the only one that I have to have, essentially. Correct. I would, I would, I would strongly advise not just having that. Absolutely, but, 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 but <laughs> yeah. according to, legally, that's the, Correct. That's the one. And it has to be paid up in advance. And okay. this is a lot of people get confused. You know, if one looks at the certificate, it will say Shulam paid on it if it's being goes yeah. through the computerized systems, and it has the date and the time. Right. There is no such thing as being able to backdate this insurance. Right. So, for example, if, if let's say you were the agent and I was going to, you would put on your system and it's gone through and you take the payment details. It goes yes. through there and then and the sticker is dated and timed. So you can't be, you've taken the car and say, oh, I'll deal with it when I get home. Yes. And if something's happened you know, on that journey, you're in essence driving uninsured and also... So, so would, it, would, it, would a dealership let you drive out without the... Betrothal? They shouldn't. Right. So, they okay. shouldn't. They, I, I haven't come across a dealership who's allowed that to happen. Right. They usually will only release the car um, you know, once, once shows that they have a valid paid-up certificate. Yeah. Uh, it, but it may be a second-hand purchase. Right. So if you're buying from a private dealer, no, private individuals may not ask right. for that. Or if, if you, yes, as you, if you die, people are selling between themselves, yeah. it's not through a dealership. So if I bought a car You need you. to make sure that you've got that Betuachova in place Correct. before you drive away with that vehicle. Correct. And quite often, if people are buying a car you know, at late at night, the insurance companies may be shut, so you might be able to do some online or through direct line insurers, yeah. but are you shopping around and are you getting, you know, the best uh, package, yeah. so, so to speak? So I would always adv advise in advance, if someone is, let's say, buying one car and buying a new car, yeah. so you might want to upgrade it or, sw or, or, or transfer the policy from one to the other at the time of doing it. So you make sure you're doing it at a time or have it done in advance of the purchase right. so that you don't get to the place and you're stuck and then you don't have the insurance that gets out, out of office, office hours so you aren't, aren't able to purchase it. Okay. But ultimately, yeah, that's the only legal requirement. It's paid in advance. Often people will see on their credit card statements because a lot of companies will allow you to pay it in installments in yeah. touch them in. Okay. In Hebrew, it's known as an iskas skura. It is okay. a closed transaction because it has to be paid in advance. So if, if let's say you are purchasing the, the chova and you've got a, 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 an Israeli visa card, let's say, the insurance company is receiving from your visa company the full amount. Right. So you'll see in your statement, if you've split, split it into, let's say, 10 payments, if let's say it costs 1,000 shekel, so each month you're paying 100 shekel, the insurance company has already received the full thousand shekel to cover the Correct, bitoch. Because it has to be paid up front. Correct. So it has to be paid in advance. Right. So you will see on your credit card statement, payment one out of ten, two out of ten, three out of ten, because yeah. it's included. So we'll, well, actually, if you've got a limit on your credit card for, let's say, 10,000 shekel, initially, a thousand shekels has been eaten up. The following month, 900 and 800. Yeah. So you, it is eating into your ashrai, into, you. your your credit. Credit into your credit on the credit card. So yeah. that is just one thing. But that's... that's that's the bitor chova. Okay. You then have bitor makif, which is comprehensive, fully okay. comprehensive coverage, and then you've got bitor tzad gimel. Okay. Within makif, tzad gimel third party liability is covered. Within third party liability, it's not comprehensive. What's the difference? So let's go back to the accident. We've taken the injured people okay. out of the equation. We're looking at the damage to my car and the damage I've caused to the other car. So if I have fully comprehensive coverage, if yes. I've got Bitur Makif, the damage to my car and the damage I caused to the Yellow Beetle will be covered by my insurance. That's Makif. Makif. Okay. The other person will be claiming off my insurance. So his insurance company will come to your insurance company? Uh, yeah. Or they'll come directly to me, but some kind of documentation. But ultimately, the payment will come from my, my makif, my Go, comprehensive got you, policy. Got you. So it's covering what is third party. This person is a third party to me. It's not me. Yes. So my insurance is coming. It doesn't have to be a car. It could be if I've crashed into someone's fence or someone's house yes. and caused structural damage there as well. That would be covered within the third party up to the limits within the policy and different policies have different limits. If I only have third party liability, so my car won't be covered this car will be covered. Right. So if a lot of people think, I've got Bitur Chava, I've got coverage. It's an yeah. old car. I've, I've bought a 20-year-old a car. It's only worth about six or 7,000 shekel. 
I don't need to pay a couple of thousand shekel to insure. You know, I'm not worried about damaging it. Correct. But you've got to worry yeah. about the other car so or the other people, home. Exactly. A lot of people don't, don't miss. I remember there's a, a claim from, from many years ago now where a very old Subaru hit the back of our client's car. Yes. 2,000 shekel worth of damage to the, the old Subaru. Yes. However, they had crashed into our client's new Mercedes and caused 127,000 shekel worth of damage. Okay. So you want to make sure in those situations that you've got at least sad gimmick. Yes. So third party only covers the other car. Yes. Makif, fully comprehensive, will cover damage to my car and to the other car that I've hit. The question always comes up, when do I downgrade from fully comprehensive to just having third so party. So that's what I was going to ask you. So Makif and Tzad Gimel is one Makif, and the same thing? Makif includes Tzad Gimel. Got you. Okay, when you downgrade to Tzad Gimel, it's only covering this other car I've hit. I have Makif, I don't need to have another third party. So, so for example, you don't, have to ju- you don't have to cover yourself, but you always want to make sure that you have Tzad Gimel so that Correct. the other party is covered. Exactly. Got it. So the question also being, as my car gets older, and the value depreciates, yes. decreases, when do I make that decision, when to downgrade the insurance from fully comprehensive to third party? Got you. That is a personal conversation, that's a personal decision. For example, for some people it might be 30,000 shekel. Someone who isn't concerned and say, I, I'm not worried, I'm not gonna pay another thousand, two thousand shekel. Uh, I'll just buy another car. For is, is there a big difference in premiums if I downgrade? If I, if I choose not to have my kif, if I just if I just have the third party, is there a big difference in my monthly premium? So that's a good question. It depends on a number of factors. It depends on the type of car. Yeah. It depends on the claims record. It depends on the age of the driver, various other parameters yes. as well. Uh, I always recommend to people as they have an older car, the equation that I, 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 I put to clients is as follows. How much does it cost to c- cover Makif, fully comprehensive? Yes. How much does it cover just to cover the Sad Gimel third party? What's the differential? If the differential is, let's say, 1,300 shekel, is it worth paying the extra 1,300 shekel to cover my car yes. against the value of the car? Uh, if the car's worth eight, 9,000 shekels, you may say, I'm not paying a 1,300 shekel to cover a car that's worth 8,000. Right. I'll take the hit. Especially as you, you add on to that, there is a co-pay, deductible or excess to right. pay in it. So you're going to pay something policies. anyway. Yeah, usually it, depends, it varies. You, you know, on average, it's between 1,000 to 2,000 shekel, depending on the nature of the damage, or if you go to one of the insurance company uh, uh, garages to get it fixed. Uh, but ultimately, that's the equation to, you know, to, you know, to have. As the car gets older, when do I reduce it from fully comprehensive to Got third it. party? So just in a nutshell, what are the three insurances before we then maybe touch on within the policy what are all of the differences? So we said, Bitor Chovan covers the bodily injury, whether someone in my car or a pedestrian, it is a no-fault insurance. So even I've hit this car, yes. the people in that car will be covered by this person's insurance policy. Right. Then you've got the, the physical damage. Makif, fully comprehensive, will cover the damage to my own car and damage I caused to the third party as well. So third party is built into that. Yeah. If I've only got third party, it will only cover damage I've caused to this car, not to my own car. Gotcha. So that sums up, I guess, the, the names Great. that, no, that explains. Out. That explains it. It's very important um, to understand that, I think. Are there, are there things that will affect your premiums? So, so for example, I want... Uh, a bigger, less or more deductible uh, my previous uh, history. Um, would I need to bring a history from when I come as an OLE? Would I need to bring a history of my, my, my previous insurance claims and record from overseas? So it's a, it's a very, very good point. Uh, the, there are a number of factors that impact the, the, the cost of the insurance, other than the actual car itself. For example, you know, a, a Porsche is clearly going to be more expensive than a, you know, a 20 year old you know, Subaru to, 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 in, to insure. Um, you've got the age of the driver. Yes. So someone who is a new driver, there are different age brackets. So a 17 year old is gonna pay more than let's say a 19 year old, 21 year old, 24, 30, 35, 40. There are different age brackets. Gotcha. You know, 
that as someone gets into an older bracket, they should be paying less for insurance. Okay. So that's one aspect is the physical age of the young driver. Okay. Another factor is insurance record. So, so let's say the two of us are looking to buy a car. And let's say you have had no claims in the last 20 years. And I have had a claim like clockwork, like clockwork every six months. Yes. Every January the 1st and every June the 1st, I happen to have a car accident. You have one accident, put it down to bad luck. But if I'm having, you know, I'm a serial, uh, you know, crasher. Yeah. Uh, so the insurance company will likely say, Danny, you are not quite as good a driver as Warren So they're going to penalise you. So, yeah, I, I pose a greater risk to insurance company. That's right. part of the underwriting process. And they will say either they will choose not to insure me at all because I, I, I'm just a crazy driver and they don't want, don't want to take that risk, don't want to even be there. Right. Or they may, I'm likely to pay a lot more in insurance for the same car than you will pay. Right. And or I may have a higher deductible copay or excess to pay than you because the insurance company say, well, we're prepared to insure you, but we're seeing that you're having such a high number of claims, we want to minimize what we as the insurance company have to pay out, so we will charge you a higher copay, Hishtat Vatat Smith, than we're going to charge Warren. Uh, so that is another aspect, so the claims history. You then, so, so on the claims history, for someone who's an Oleh Hadash, if they've come to Israel, so let's say you made Aliyah you know, last week, right. and you've called me up and say, Danny, I'd like to you know, quote for car insurance. So the insurance company can say, well, what's your claims record? And yeah. you say, well, I haven't got, got insurance. Because yet. I haven't lived yeah, in Israel. I haven't lived it. Right. So a number of companies will uh, charge the Ole a much higher rate because they have no insurance history. Okay. The advice that we always give to, to Olim, and we're not alone here, there are other you know, quality agents out there as well who are familiar with working with, with Olim, is to get a claims letter from your country of origin okay. at least three, four years. A claim okay. stays on your record here for three years. So how, so how far back do you need to go to, to satisfy the insurance company at three, so, four so years? I, a lot of people say three, we would say four years. Okay. Why I say four? Because there's you know, one company which... If someone's only got one claim in four years, they will still give the full no claims discount. Okay. So in case that insurance company has to, happens to be the cheapest with the no claims. So whilst a lot of people throw out the three years, because that's how long a claim stays in record, because there is a company out there who, if there's one claim in four years, will still give the full no claims bonus, we yeah. recommend getting a letter of, of, of uh, showing that there are four years of claims free driving. That way we can transpose that and give you the full claims discount based on the overseas record as right. well. So that is something which, which, which can Im impact, especially the Ole who comes here, who uh, to avoid them needlessly paying a higher premium as, as far as that's concerned. So we, we've spoken about the claims record. So there's no, let's, let's say I, I, I didn't think of that before. I've now arrived and Danny's now told me, he's given me the great advice. I should have got this from wherever I was and I didn't get it. Is there any way around it or I'm going to pay the higher? Can I, can I sign a waiver to say that I haven't had any claim or is there no way around it and the insurance company is going to charge me the higher premium? So it all depends. I guess there's no carte blanche. There's no, no, no answer that I can give that's going to cover everything. Right. I guess it's got to be on a case-by-case -case basis. Yes. So it may be, and again, this is where a good broker will come in as well. If you're able to obtain the letter afterwards, yeah. so then to go back to the insurance company and then reduce the premiums accordingly. Got you. So that might be able to be done okay. in, in many instances. Uh, in a lot of instances, we have the ability, if the person doesn't have that, and we always ask this before setting out the policy, sometimes a declaration, uh, because of the size of our agency, yes. with certain insurance companies, they allow us, with a declaration signed by the new Orlair, that they haven't had accidents in the last three, three years or four years. Yes. So sometimes that may, be, I'm not saying always, that may be okay. able to uh, assist and lower as well. So, that, that's, so I, I wouldn't say there's always a way to circumvent it, but there, you know, there often are ways to circumvent that, that issue. But that, that, that's, that's one aspect. Okay. There's another aspect which also impacts it, and that's driving experience. Okay. So again, let's say you know, we're both the same age. 
I passed my driving test when I was 17. You decided, you know, at a later stage in life, you know, last month to finally take your driving test and you passed. Right. So your driving experience is less than mine. So you've got, you're going to be in the category of new driver. You've got okay. young driver, which is talking about when we spoke about the age of young driver pays more, but also a nahag chadash. Right. A new driver initially will pay more than someone who is a driver with greater experience. So even, even though we're both uh, 35, yeah. <laughs> if I've just been plus, driving for... Plus you, fat. Yeah. <laughs> and, and some. <laughs> uh, if I've been driving, it, it, it doesn't matter you know, in terms of that, that age. It's not so much the age, it's how long have I been driving for. If I've been driving for a year and you've been driving by 15, for 15 years, that has an impact on my premium. That, can also have an, that will also have an impact on, on, the, on the premiums as Got well. It. So there, there are multi, multi facets and... and things that impact the cost of the insurance. Now, what I would say, and this is another area that Olim often fall into, and I see this on, on various groups, you know, it comes up a number of times on, on yeah. the Facebook group that I, I co-moderate uh, called Living Financially Smarter in Israel, whereby people were asked the question you know, about you know, the cost of it, and I'm, I seem to be paying a lot more for insurance. Yes. A few years ago, everything went, went automated. On the, uh, you know, maybe I'll, t- I'll take my driving license out to show because this this will be a, an important uh, thing thing to note. On a bottom of a driving license, even though I've had this for you know well over twenty years now, right. on the bottom left hand side of someone who converted yeah. their driving license, it will see gotcha. it says here Hamara al pi rishon So you can see it's on the bottom left. Uh, it says you no. Know, it has been converted from a foreign license. Okay, so, so the fact that somebody sees this and it was only issued, your license was only if issued sort of in the last few years as an, as an Ole, they know that I have previous driving experience from my... So they won't automatically know. No. Okay. That's the problem. With it all being automated, if let's say I made Aliyah and I you know, last month I've just converted it and I've just got my, my new license, the computerized systems that the insurance companies plug into yeah. will show, ah, my driving experience with an insurance is only from a month ago. Got you. So automatically the insurance companies will charge me the higher rate with lack of driving experience. Because it's, it's almost like I'm a, a, a Nahu like exactly. I'm a new driver. Exactly. Now, uh, agents who, who are familiar with this issue, you know, this is something which we, we uh, are very, obviously being, you know, a very large English-speaking agency, having worked for 50 years now with, with Olim, we are able to, have, by showing the, you know, the wording on the bottom yeah. left-hand side, the bottom right-hand side, which says, Hamara Pirishion Zar, we are able to have the insurance companies manually overwrite the okay. system, and then, on the basis of the real driving experience, have the insurance companies update that, and obviously, someone who's got a, a, a longer driving experience will be able to pay a lower premium gotcha. than someone who is uh, you know, a new it. driver. So, so would I then have to, I would have to bring my, would I, to show that to you, would I have to bring my license from my, my, my original Well, I'm country? assuming you have it in your, your wallet anyway. Yeah, <laughs> normally you would, so, but, but I'm saying that would be helpful you know, when, I'm, when I'm throwing out documents, well, I don't need this anymore. Absolutely. It, it, it would be helpful when I, when I come to bring that document with me or that driver's license with me so I can show you and you can Absolutely. use that as proof to override the system. That is something we would also save in the client's file as well. So there is documentation that you know, they are not a new driver. Got it. I, ultimately, because the Israeli license does say Hamara Pirishon Zal, that it's been converted. So we know that, especially nowadays with the change in regulations, that you have to be able to convert, you have to have had the license for at least five years now. Right. So they're going to know the person's got at least five years of experience. Got it. Um, so in those situations, someone who has converted license recommended speak to uh, someone in the insurance industry who's familiar with this and has the ability to override this override the, and overwrite the systems yes. so that you can pay less and not be treated as a, 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 a novice got you i've got a a young driver in the family My commiserations. Young, <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's hopefully going to be getting his license soon now uh, in terms of, you know, for those of us who are not familiar with the system, in terms of 
how do I go about uh, insuring him? Do I, does it, do I just add him to my regular insurance? I've heard of certain apps that you can get where you can, where you just sign up for a couple of hours while they're driving. What can you tell us about how do I go about insuring, insuring a child, a young driver, somebody's about to get their license here? So why did I say joke in my commiserations? Because that, that is a, a very expensive period of time for a parent, assuming the parent's going to be paying for the child <laughs> to be insured. There are some children who, uh, I say children, young adults, um, who will, will pay their own way as well. The, the cost of the chova, when we spoke about the, the bodily injury, if I, if I look back in time to, uh, well, back in the ancient past, when I was 17 year old, I, I would guess wrongly take more risks then as I would now. Right. Uh, and I would maybe not drive as, as carefully you know, as, as I would now. You know, fortunately, I got away with it not, not having any accidents right. then. But uh, you know, the risk for the insurance company is greater because they're aware that, that especially with young men driving, yeah. the number of claims tends to be proportionally higher than, let's say, people in our age bracket. Got you. So the chova will be a lot more expensive to cover okay. for a young driver. Anyway, no matter whether it, what the car is, you know, it's going to cost usually a, another couple of thousand shekel okay. for the year yeah. in the majority of cases. There are options around it. Now, if let's say your you know, young daughter or young son is only going to be driving on an ad hoc basis here and there, let's say they're in the army, they're in yeshiva um, or university, and they, they don't drive that often at yes. all. They're only going to be dri driving a few times in, in the year. So different insurance companies will have a different amount of times that the young driver can be added, uh, maybe for a four-day period, a two-day period. There may be a maximum number of times, and it may cost a, a symbolic amount to add them for that short period. So okay. in that situation, that may be the most cost-efficient okay. way. It's also worth noting that often... For a young driver, the hishtatvutatsmit, the deductible, the excess that, that they would have to pay if they're held accountable, uh, is usually higher, okay. often 50% higher right. than what you or I would have to pay. Um, that's, that's as far as the, the young driver from the, from the chova is concerned okay. and the hours. The other thing to note... So chova, he's got to have chova and, and chova, but chova, there's different ways to do it. We can either, you just add him to your, your chova as is, or there are ways to, if, if he's only going to be driving periodically, there are ways to do it in a more uh, cost-effective, cost -effective, uh, periodical way. Correct. So you can, okay. you can, you can do that. If, if they're going to be driving for the entire year... So the most common way is to add them and you need to update the chovah to cover because it goes by the age of the youngest driver. Yes. So that's going to be costing a good couple of thousand shekel for the entire year. Yes. Uh, usually people who have a young driver are going to be uh, you know, at our stage in life. Uh, it's very rare that you have a 28-year-old you know, with a 17-year-old uh, right. driver. So it's usually people who are used for a number of years paying a lower cost for their right. insurance. So it comes as a surprise, so you're suddenly, suddenly paying a lot it's, more. It's a lot more. So if they're only driving on an ad hoc basis, depending on the frequency they're going to be driving, it may be worthwhile just paying for those three, four days at a time uh, to, do, to do so. But if they're, going, if they're, if they're living at home and they're going to drive it daily... So then that's not, a, that's not the optimum solution. Right. Then you need to either choose to add them the whole time, which is going to be more expensive. And it's also going to be more expensive for the makif. Okay. The other thing to note is, is if they're on your policy, so your son or daughter has the accident on your watch, so on yeah. your policy, the claim is on your policy as well. Right. So you now have a claim and you know, the more claims you have, the more you're going to be paying in premiums as well. Right. So for example, in, in a few years time when he goes off my insurance and takes his own insurance, that will still reflect on my record. Uh, for three years, for the three for, years for, that they're still on. Okay. And you know, they, the child may not necessarily have their own insurance record as well. Yeah. There are solutions to that though. For example, there is a, an insurance company that allows... Uh, a child to be insured with the same company, yes. usually to about age 24, where you, in essence, purchase a bank of kilometers. Yes. Where 
you're, you're in essence saying, I know my child, my son and my daughter is not going to be driving a huge amount. They might drive every day around the corner to friends or do a bit of shopping or you know, back in the day where, where apparently cinemas used to be a thing or, or going out to, to cafes, although hopefully we're, right. we're getting to that stage <laughs> where things are gradually opening up now in the hopefully uh, soon post-corona world. Um, so if they do drive frequently, but they're not driving that far, so there is a policy available where it tracks them on their phone okay. uh, and they log in each time and log off and it comes out of the bank of kilometers that they can right. drive. It is a much cheaper policy. Okay. If someone has two cars, it can, you know, for example, let's say you and your wife have a car and you've insured it with that company as well, they can be insured on both cars and extra, so you're not paying the extra on both. Okay. And you're, you don't pay more for the chova on that. Then that way, it saves uh, on the chova. Even though there's two cars. Even that, it's 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 something which allows it to be far more cost efficient. So it's you're allowing the driver, the young driver, to drive on both your cars with the same company. Yeah. The young driver has their own policy. So if they have a claim, it's on their record, not on yours. Right. And they can top up as well. They're running out of, of kilometers. They can top it up. It can roll over to next year. You have to buy a, you know, a symbolic amount for the next insurance year. But if they haven't used it up, they don't get wasted. You know, they can still, the 17-year-old can roll up and they're 18, they're still a young driver. Got it. it can roll over. So there, there are options where it can be very cost effective for someone who has a young driver and, and they can take out this plan. I would advise parents who are coming up you know, let's say their child is 16 and they know within a year they're going to have a child who hopefully will pass the driving test and will start driving to already an advanced think forward and ask for that insurance company, even if it might be slightly more expensive initially, because in the long run it will be much cheaper when that child uh, does pass right. their test. Got you. And it's a way of, number one, having them build up their own claims record. And if the unforeseen were to happen and there is a claim, it doesn't go on the parent's record. It goes just on the, on, on the son or daughter's record. Right, you. Uh, and the third thing, it's, it's often much more uh, cost efficient because it's a lot cheaper than adding them the whole time right. uh, where you pay much more for both the Chova and the Makif. And they can be added if there are more than one car in the family. Both, of the par the, both parents, the mother and the father, for example, have a car each that if they're without the same company, at no extra cost, they can be insured and drive in both cars. So that is an option which, which exists. Okay, great. Denny, do you have any other useful tips for us around car insurance, things that we should be aware of yep. maybe before we, before we go? So yes, so, and I, so a few things. Within the insurance policy as well, often within the company, some companies set it externally, but there's usually towing system, uh, towing services, roadside assistance, breakdown, uh, breakdown coverage. Uh, a lot of people may forget about it. Always when you get your policy, save in your phone what the towing services are. Right. Now, especially as a car, was going back when we spoke about downgrading to third party, just covering the car you hit. Yes. Usually older cars are more susceptible to breaking down as well. So make sure as well, in addition to the Chova, yes. you're also covering third party, but make sure you've also got the breakdown and towing services and replacement cars uh, covered within that. That is something that is very important to have. And to avoid having to pay out of pocket for something you've got coverage, jot down the number, make a note of yeah. it, stay, save it in your phone or put it in the glove compartment within the car. So if you break down in the middle of the night, there are very few insurance agents who will either answer the phone <laughs> or be best pleased to answer the phone at two or three o'clock in the morning right. uh, to advise of what the, uh, the phone number is of the towing services. So make sure you have that. That's something that, that, that's, that's usually covered or should be covered. Yeah. Um, the second thing is windshield coverage. So if let's say a stone's flicked up from a truck in front and, and cracked the windshield, that's not considered a claim and most policies will cover that. There's no, it doesn't count as a claim. Okay. You may have to pay for the sealant, the rubber sealant around, uh, around the windshield. Uh, but that's covered. Policies can be, you know, can be. So I can claim for that, but it won't count against me. It's more of a service provider, yeah. you know, through one of the many companies like Autoglass, Alif Alif Glass, yes. uh, where you may have to go to certain places or they may come to you depending on the policy, uh, where they will fix it. 
but it doesn't count as a claim. A lot of people aren't familiar with that. Yes. You know, policies can be expanded to cover the wing mirrors. Right. You know, Especially if you live in Tel Aviv. Yeah, so I, I actually had that uh, a couple of years ago. Um, so especially, you know, if I let's say look at my uh, the first car which I bought was a 1968 Triumph, which had like a, just a metal uh, casing on a, a very small mirror. Right. So how much is that going to cost to replace if, that, if, if that's broken? Today, everything's you know, you know, electrical, they fold in right. and then they, you can move them with a, with a button. Uh, you know, if someone has swiped off you know, your, your mirror, that's a few thousand shekel. Right. So I happen to have the rider on, on, on the policy. It's not a standard. Built into, into, the, into the policy. And uh, I had to pay like uh, 150, 200 shekel because it was not just the glass, it was the whole, what's called bet manoir, the whole mirror right. fitting yeah. that had to be replaced. It just cost me, you know, up to a couple hundred shekel in the copay. Didn't yeah. count as a claim, right? And it was, uh, it was, it was fixed. Uh, so those are extra things that can be added. Okay. Um, other things that can, you know, you know to, I guess, use uh, George Orwell. You know, all animals are equal, just some are more more equal than others. So to paraphrase what, what what he said, you know. All comprehensive uh, policies are comprehensive, just yeah. some are more comprehensive than others. Right. Uh, if we go back to July 2019, so coming up for two years, um, often we have demonstrations in this country. You know, thankfully, we're in a, in a country where you know, p- democracy people are able to, to demonstrate. So back in the summer of 2019, there were the uh, demonstrations against uh, the discrimination uh, that was going on for people from, who, came, who came on Aliyah from Ethiopia. As with all, uh, often happens in some demonstrations, there might be one or two people who take a one step too far. Right. And I still remember, I think it was the 3rd of July, 2019, there's pictures in, in, in the newspapers and articles in, in, in Ynet showing a burnt out car right. that, that had been torched. Yes. The standard policy will not cover riots, strikes or commotions. Okay. In Hebrew known as Muhumoto Shvitot. Okay. And I, I still remember you know, in Ynet, for example, the article was, how can you claim if your car was you know, burnt Good. or damaged in, in, in a demonstration? Right. And they said, you know, it's going to be excluded from coverage from the insurance uh, policy. Right. There are riders or things that can be added. And I, you know, all our policies tend to cover this as standard, which many people don't cover for some yes. reason. You can cover damage for riots, strikes and commotions. So that if your car was in the... You know, wrong place at the wrong time right. and is damaged, or in this case, which was that picture, had been torched and you know, obviously a total loss in the car, it doesn't really cost that much extra yes. to add okay. and it makes sure the car is covered. Right. You know, also, earthquake damage, you know, with, won't go into whether or not you know, the likelihood of that happening is or won't happen. There's one you know, other than the school of thought that the longer we are since the last one, some say that we're more likely, we're closer <laughs> to the next one. But again, the standard policy won't cover, Ri'idat Adama, won't cover earthquake damage. There are rises, this is something which we tend to add in all our policies as well to cover that. Yes. Uh, another example would be, uh, you know, what, what happens in a claim? At the time of damage to a car, so you've taken your car to the garage, a loss adjuster, a shamai assessor comes to assess two things. First, how much does it cost to fix yes. and whether or not the car will be deemed a total loss yes. or a write-off. They will also assess, has there been any depreciation caused to my car? Right. So for example, if, if I was looking to buy a car and I see two cars exactly the same, same age, one has not been involved in accidents, but one has been repaired after a major accident, yes. the likelihood is, is, is that the value of the car that's post a major accident and having been fixed is going to be yeah, cheaper. Right. So I've ultimately, in the accident, lost money if I was to sell it the next day. Right. So the insurance companies will pay the depreciation, the loss in value at that point in time. Okay. Now, most standardized policies will have an additional deductible or copay of 1.5% of the value of the car. Okay. So if let's say the car's worth 100,000 shekel, and I've lost 5,000 shekel. <coughs> I've lost 5,000 shekel on the value of the car if I was to sell it the next day after being fixed. 
I won't get the full 5,000 shekel in okay. addition to the, it being fixed. I will get 3,500. Right. 5,000 less the 1.5% okay. for 1,500 shekel. Got it. There are policies, and again, most of our policies have this, where we have a zero deductible on the loss of uh, value. Yes. So we will cover the full depreciation. Got it. That is, in essence, some other things to look for. Great. Danny, thank you so much for your time. It was really informative Thanks. and helpful. Thank you. Thank you.